Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Skaldi and today I'm going to be talking about the animation player. A lot of people ask me how they can get the animation player up and running, how do they use it, how do they create animations and so on. So I'm, I'm, just, gonna, I'm just gonna show you. Starting from scratch, I'm just gonna create my main scene. I'm gonna use the control node as the root node. I'm gonna name it main and press control S to save the entire thing and hit save. Okay, so, animation player. Let's begin by adding it. So let's add a child node, let's search for animation player. There it is. When you create it, you may notice you get a little window on the bottom here. This is where you actually create your animations using it. Now the most relevant options on the right here would be active and speed. But most of the time you don't even have to do anything here. Because all the actions are usually done from within script. So, let's, um, let's create something we can animate. I'm gonna create another node on main. I'm gonna add a sprite this time. And on this sprite, I'm going to load the default icon as the texture. I'm gonna select this one. And what we're going to do is, we're just gonna make it move a little bit. But let's start from the middle-ish. Let's hit play, and make sure to select our main scene as the main scene. Let's hit play again. Make sure it's middle, and it is. So let's select the animation there again. And let's pretend we want to animate this sprite to to go in a circle. Well, the first thing I have to do is select the sprite, after of course getting the animation pane on the bottom here. Then I have to think about what kind of properties I want to animate, because you probably don't want to animate everything. In my case, I just want to change the position a little bit, so I'm gonna set the initial position for the pause. But before we can do anything here, we will have to make sure to create an animation by selecting this empty paper over here. And let's call this first animation rotate in circles. Actually, rotate. Let's keep it simple here. And then, if I want to rotate this, well, I would just take a look at the rotation transform here, and select the key here. This will create a track for this rotation key. I'm gonna hit create, and on the bottom here we see we now have a sprite transform slash rot. And that is the property we are going to animate, so even if we change other properties here, if you don't hit the key next to them to actually store those property in that period of time, which now is currently zero, it won't be animated. I'm going to rotate this, I'm gonna press E or simply press the rotate mode button, and then I'm gonna rotate it to, let's say, 180. Well, it's about 180. Actually, I have a manual set that, so let's do that. 180. And after making the changes, I have to make sure to actually <laughs> move this around. I have to move this before I actually rotate, that's my bad. Because if you don't, as you noticed, it returns to default, because when you change this, we always take the form of that frame in the animation, so always move to the next step before making the changes. So I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna write 180. And now I'm gonna hit the key button, which is going to create a key on that spot in time. So let's do that. So now you can see we have two dots, one at zero and one at mm, about 0 0.4, I believe. So if I now were to drag across them, you can actually see the transitioning between zero and 0 0.5. So let's drag it out a little bit. And this will create more details in the rotation, because we have more steps between each change in the rotational value. So if we wanted a very smooth transitioning from zero to one, we would add more steps. Currently, each step is 0.1 second, so let's set it to 0.01 second. That's gonna create a lot more step. Let's take a look at how it looks like now. As you can see, it's a lot smoother, and it's all still within one second. So play around with steps to find the effect you want. Now, if I were to reduce that to 0.5, we would only have two steps, or three steps. Start, 90 degrees, and 180 degrees, because there wouldn't be enough frames to create a smooth transitioning. That's basically how steps work, so I'm gonna set it back to 0 0.01, because that's a nice and smooth animation. And then we have length of animation, and it is as you would think it is, it's actually the length of our animation. Currently it is one second, which you can see by this little grey area here, or blue, or whatever color this is. <laughs> so if I wanted it to increase the length of this animation, I could set, for example, five seconds. As you can see now, the area increased to five seconds. So if I were to play now, it's gonna stop at one second with the rotation, and it's gonna continue, continue, continue until, well, it returns to, well, the end. Let's turn it back to 1, because we don't need that long of a rotation. But what if you wanted to loop this? Because, as you notice, when you play this, it's not looping. Well, let's hit this little button over here. This will create a loop. It will tell the animation player that this rotate animation is a loop, and it's going to loop. Let's stop that, and let's go all the way to the start here. One thing to keep in mind, if you stop working with the animation player, always remember to set it back to 0. Because otherwise, it's gonna save this, it's gonna, this is the value this sprite is going to keep after you stop using animation player. 
Okay, so what if we wanted more animation? Well, currently it's just rotating. Well, what if I wanted to move up and down a bit? Well, if I move up and down, I would be showing you the position of our node. So I'm gonna add the, in the first frame, so at zero seconds in, I'm gonna add a key there. At the position. And then it's gonna ask me to create a track for the position, and I'm gonna select create. Now we have another line here for the position. So if I now were to go to one second, actually let's go to 0.5-ish. You can also manually type it right here and press enter. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to move it upwards. I'm just going to manually type in, in the y-axis. I'm going to subtract 100 from it. I'm just going to take it up a little bit. And then I'm going to hit the key button. As you can see, we create a key in the middle here. If I were to drag it to the right now, what do you think will happen? Do you think it's going to stand there, just freeze there? Or do you think it's going to return to the beginning again? Well, if you had thought that it would stay there, you would usually be right. However, because we are in a loop, it's going to go back to the position of 0 when it reaches 1. Now, if I were to turn off loop, this position is going to be the exact same position as the one at 0.5. So I'm going to turn it off and move it around. And as you can see, now we are actually stuck there. Because it does not expect to loop and will not return to the source, which is 0. Let's turn on loop again so we can see it bounce and hit play. And as you can see, the rotation is kept, even though we are changing the position. Because each property is its own. So it is up to you to combine these properties to get the desired effect you want. Okay, so I'll show you a little bit how you can use the animation there. You can of course create new animations by just selecting the paper again and creating new animations. But how do you... How do you call these animations from within the code? For example, if I press space, how do I make it do this? Make it jump once and land on its head. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn off the animation loop, because I only want it to run once when I start playing this. So let's go to main. I'm gonna add a script for main. This is just gonna be a dummy script, it's just gonna run one animation on start. First thing I have to do is to get the reference for animation player. And I'm just gonna call get node. I'm gonna enter the name of that animation player to get it. And then I'm gonna press dot play. And in here, you just have to enter the name of that animation. And this line will cause the animation to play. If it play once or loops, depends on the setting of that animation. So be careful about that. So if I now hit play, it's going to jump up and spin upside down. And there it is. So if I now were to hit loop, just to show you an example here, I'm gonna enable loop on this and hit play again. It's gonna keep doing it forever and ever until you tell it to stop. So what if this was a jump animation for, let's say, a character? Well, you probably wouldn't use looping then. You would kind of just go when it should land again. So let's make sure we can add the landing to it. So on one second, I'm gonna right click the first key. I'm gonna select duplicate selection. Then I'm gonna press the left mouse button to set it in there. So now we have the first and last key, you have the same values. So even though we don't loop, we should return to where we began. Now, what isn't returning is the rotation. So every time I were to play this, it would just suddenly reset to the zero rotation value for continuing and landing there. And it's gonna stick, stay there until I hit play again, and then it's gonna start from zero and do it all over again. What if I'm running a, an animation and I want to know when it stops running? Perhaps you want something to happen at the end of an animation. Well, let's go to the script here. Using the animation player here. For this example, I'm gonna get the reference of that animation player so I can reuse it. So I'm gonna use onReady var anim player equals get node animation player. So I'm gonna remove this part. Actually, I'm gonna remove the entire line now. And what I'm gonna begin with is the anim player. I'm gonna enter connect because this will bind a signal from this animation player because I want to know when this animation player is finished when it's finished playing an animation. So I'm gonna select that. First string is the signal, and that's the name of finished. The second one is where I want this to run, and I want it to run on myself. And the third one is the method I want it to run when it's finished. So I'm gonna create that method, and I'm going to name it unfinished. And then I'm gonna end it right there. Copying this, let's create that function. Function unfinished, and then something. What do we want to happen? Well, I don't know. Let's print a string. So, animation finished. Let's make sure we actually play the animation when we start this. So I'm gonna run anim player dot play rotate. Let's save and let's run this. Take a look and see what happens here. And as you can see, at the end of the animation cycle, it's printed out animation finished. And this will happen every time you play an animation. However, if it loops, this is not going to run. Let's try it out. As you can see, there is no print. 
And that's the most common uses for the animation player. You can see the animation player has a lot of functions you can run. You can also ask if the animation player is currently running. So if you have multiple functions and you want to know if the animation player is playing for some reason, it's going to return true or false. And when it's false, of course, it's not going to play. It's not playing anything. So make sure to check out the documentation for the animation players by searching help and typing in animation and selecting it. It's a very useful tool, which is one of the great features Godot have. So if you have any further questions, please comment below. And thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you haven't already and want to see more videos, please subscribe. And I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.